In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Matthew 5, 16. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God, and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who has begun this good work in us bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commandments. Wealth and riches are
Lord. O Christ. O Lord. We pray. Lord Jesus Christ, whose grace always precedes and follows us, help us to forsake all trust in earthly gain and to find in you our heavenly treasure. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading this morning comes from Amos chapter 5. Seek the Lord and live, lest he break out like fire in the house of Joseph and devour, with none to quench it for Bethel. O you who turn justice to wormwood and cast down righteousness to the earth. They hate him who reproves in the gate, and they abhor him who speaks the truth. Therefore, because you trample on the poor and you exact taxes of grain from him, you have built houses of hewn stone, but you shall not dwell in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink their wine. For I know how many are your transgressions and how great are your sins. You who afflict the righteous, who take a bribe, and turn aside the needy in the gate. Therefore he who is prudent will keep silent at such a time, for it is an evil time. Seek good and not evil, that you may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you, as you have said. Hate evil and love good, and establish justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle this morning comes from Hebrews chapter 3. Take care, brothers, lest there be any of you in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart, leading you to fall away from the living God. But exhort one another every day, as long as it is called today, that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. For we share in Christ if we indeed hold our original confidence firm to the end. As it is said, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. For who were those who heard and yet rebelled? Was it not all those who left Egypt led by Moses? And with whom was he provoked for forty years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose bodies fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who were disobedient? 
So we see that they were unable to enter because of unbelief. This is the word of the Lord. This morning, the Holy Gospel, according to Mark, the 10th chapter. Glory be to thee. As Jesus was setting out on his journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not bear false witness, do not defraud, honor your father and mother. And he said to him, Teacher, all these I have kept from my youth. And Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, You lack one thing, go sell all that you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me. Disheartened by the saying, he went away sorrowful for he had great possessions. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee. We confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Good morning and welcome again in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. It's a Saturday afternoon. You've wandered into the kitchen. You've opened the fridge. 
and you're frozen, scanning the contents. You've done it twice already, as if something has changed since five minutes ago when you were just there. You'll probably do it again in another five minutes. And then you hear, what you looking for? Asking your family when they find you standing there. Truth be told, you don't really know what you're looking for. You're hungry or snacky or bored. You can't decide if you want something sweet or salty, chewy or crunchy, or knowing me, all of the above with chocolate. You have a number of options looking at you, and yet there isn't one that stands out as the answer to what you're craving. Yeah, the sermon's more about other things than just food. But what are you looking for? How would you fill in that blank? What might answers be? I'm looking for happiness, excitement, love, a place to belong, security, purpose, a good time, maybe even just escape. We are all seekers. We're looking for what we think makes us come alive. And yet experience proves that none of the things that we mentioned all sounding like good things fulfill us for any length of time or fulfill us permanently. We're not created to seek our source of life in any of these things things that are good gifts from God, our creator. We're naturally, and may I say sin-naturedly, doubtful of God's intent to give us what we want, and then persuaded that we can find life apart from God in seemingly good things, with our own ingenuity, or the way our friends think, what's popular. What sounds good at the moment, and we're dissuaded of trusting that Yahweh, God of the Bible, the Old Testament, Amos time, really gives me what's best. We find ourselves looking elsewhere and wandering for what else we could find. You know, God's people during the time of Amos the prophet knew about seeking out their source of life apart from God. Amos is writing at a time of relative political stability in both the northern and southern kingdoms of Israel. This message, our text from Amos chapter 5 today, is addressed primarily to Israel in the northern kingdom. The external national stability, however, perhaps like America, is masking serious spiritual problems. The people had adopted the false gods of those around them. They've fallen into this same lie that others had around them. It sounded and looked and maybe felt good for a moment. They had also adopted the ancient and modern false gods, the God of self. I'm in control of my life. I can figure this out. I will do it. In service to their own appetites, the rich and well-connected people of Amos Day were building beautiful homes and planting luxurious vineyards. And they funded their efforts by oppressing and defrauding the common people. Sound familiar? This isn't a political statement. It's a spiritual one, a personal one. They charge the people unfair taxes on their grain harvests. It's verse 11a. Then when the people would complain and seek their legal rights, the rich would pay off the judges in order to maintain their unjust enterprise. Now, I'm not talking about America, right? This is northern kingdom, even though it may sound familiar. 
But God sent Amos, a prophet, to warn them about what's coming. They would build their beautiful homes, but not get to live in them. They would plant their pleasant vineyards, but miss out on the real good stuff, the wine that's aged. These warnings would find their fulfillment in Israel's destruction by the Assyrians within a generation of Amos' writing. About 722, they would be clobbered B.C. Like the well-connected of Amos' day, we're not immune either to using and abusing people around us in our search for the good life. When we seek after comfort, we use people as servants of our comfort. When we seek wealth, We use people as means of production. When we seek after pleasure and self-gratification, we use people as objects that satisfy our desire. When we seek after power, we use people either as allies in our pursuit or as obstacles to be removed. And even though our reading from Hebrews 3 today is not directly connected to Amos. Everything in the Bible is. And Hebrews reminds us and declares again that sin is deceitful. It's talking to you. And if you heard this joke, this is from a movie. I'll let you figure that one out later. How do you tell if a liar, uh, how do you tell, (laughs) sorry, how do you tell if a lawyer is lying? His lips are moving, right? Hebrews 3 tells us that sin, like the devil, is talking all the time and he's lying. He's making things sound, look good, that sin is really going to do you well. Don't you hate those commercials that talk about chocolate and all those things that are we love to have and they say it's sinfully attractive? Why do they have to say that? <laughs> that doesn't help me any. I love chocolate. No, Amos, thankfully, is God's voice calling. And I pray this morning you not only hear Amos or hear your pastor's voice, but that you hear God's voice. God himself is seeking much more than these things for us. So Amos didn't merely communicate judgment. God was pleading with his people, seek me and live. Seek the Lord and live. Verse 14, seek good and not evil that you may live. And then verse 15 tells us to hate evil and love good. It's a cover of our bulletin today as well. However, you know, sometimes we're confused because by our old nature, We can't tell which is which. And sometimes we turn things around or hear voices that make it all sound like it's upside down or inside out or backward or something's different. Something's not right. And we are confused and after some time can't even tell the difference. End up hurting people we love or want to love. We need help. The beautiful good news is that when we did not seek God, he is the one who sought us. If we're playing that hide-and-seek game, thankfully, he's coming to set us free. You've been hiding too long. It's dark, it's lonely, and it really doesn't afford you the promises in sin that it claimed that it would. No, that kind of love apart from God does not last forever. You may get a quick thrill from sin, but it ultimately will leave you addicted and empty, looking for something else, something more, something different. We are death-bound creatures and find ourselves in a twisted situation. But God does not leave us that. He comes to us and he promises pleasures with him forevermore in glory. Even though you may carry a cross today, 
You may go through some things that are uncomfortable. What it does is it gives us joy and peace, and it gives us these things in advance. He teaches us the difference between evil. His ways are always good. Even if they sound a little different, to deny yourself and take up your cross, to serve your husband and wife and your neighbor, even when they don't care about you. God is in the midst with you, and you who are baptized in his name have his Holy Spirit at work. He's helping, he's leading, he's prodding you, encouraging you, strengthening you. Thanks be to God that Christ, who is the source of life, came in our place and destroyed the power of death. He lives forever to be our life, to give us life. Don't you love these passages? John 10, 10, he says, hear Jesus' voice. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is even to those Christians who in South Korea and, 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 and Afghanistan now are persecuted for the name of Jesus. God has come to give them abundant life. Christ on the cross is for them and for you. I love in John 17 when it talks about Jesus says, and this is eternal life, that they know you, and that would be Father, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Here's how we see God. Here's how we see our own sin. And it's at his cross. We see the pain and the bloodiness of our own sin. And in place of that, Jesus, at that point on the cross, pours out his life blood and gives you life. He washes you clean in baptism. He feeds you his very body and blood today at his table. He says to you, seek me and live. This life I gave you in baptism, it's still real. The waters are flowing. And the Holy Spirit gives you life in your faith in his word and promise. Christian faith is nothing but seeking him who already found us in baptism. What a joy, what an honor. And you know, we'll even be seeking him in heaven, though we're looking at him face to face. We'll be growing and receiving. But don't wait until then because eternal life begins now. At the point you are baptized, at the point that you're saved, the point you believe, Christ is already with you and delivering his banqueting table to you now. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. If we were to read to the end of Amos's prophecy, we would find that the prophet had words of hope for his wayward countrymen again and again. God would and God does seek his people. He would save them. He would bring them home as he does and has done for us. No, we're not quite in the promised land, but he's already given you a taste of eternity in forgiveness and at his table. It is a new creation that Christ has purchased and won. We don't really know what we're seeking, but God has sought and found us so that we would seek him and find him and have him forever. In a world that doesn't know exactly what it's looking for and keeps trying and bouncing from one thing to another, we relish the opportunity both to seek and to take hold of him who has taken hold of us and rescued us. This is where true life is found. Rejoice in him who has you safe, who has found you in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory.
forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.